My name is Brian Boogie Black, coming to you live from Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, <clears throat> wanted to remind you guys that the Chuck Jones Center for Creativity is, uh, is a free service. And uh, we do, however, appreciate donations coming in from anybody who enjoys what they're learning and wants to pass on uh, their enjoyment to others. Please feel free to make a small donation if you're uh, able and willing, and then also make sure that you uh, pass this on the entire program, the Chuck Jones Center for Creativity, onto your friends and, and family. Uh, Scott is going to post up the uh, chuckjones.org uh, website so that you can make your donation if you're interested. So getting into today's class and the month in general, uh, the month of July, every Thursday at this time, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about a new area of animation and television animation in particular. It's an animation called broadcast graphics. And broadcast graphics are an area in television where it, it is not actual programming, but rather it's a way to brand the network that is bringing you the programming that you're watching. An example would be, this is CNN. So in other words, the programming, the news programs that you're watching, the special reports, et cetera, are all being brought to you by a network. And that network wants to brand itself so that when you are, are retaining that interest in the particular programming that you're watching, you're, can, you can remind yourself that it's all being brought to you by a network. So in network graphics, we deal with very, very short storytelling on the order of seconds rather than minutes, because we're really looking to quickly identify the, uh, the network that is bringing you this content, and then we want to move on to bringing you the actual programming that they have purchased and have packaged under their brand for you. So to start, I'm going to have Scott go ahead and play a video that is approximately three to three and a half minutes long that basically shows you what the area of broadcast graphics entails. This is what is called a demo reel, and it's my personal demo reel that shows you the type of content that we're going to uh, be ex exploring over the course of this entire month and also at least in being introduced to today. So with that, I'm going to let the audio run on this video. And Scott, go ahead and cue that up and go ahead and play it.
Great. So thank you, Scott. Um, as you can see, guys, you've probably seen some of those similar graphics. Hi, by the way. Hi, Liliana and Heather. Heather Rose, how are you guys? Nice to see you. You guys look fantastic. Well done. Um, so anyway, this is an interesting area of animation that doesn't involve characters and doesn't involve what we call long form. In other words, minutes. Rather, this type of graphics or this type of animation involves seconds, stories that are told approximately in about anywhere from two to 25 seconds, and then you're done. That's it, that's your story that you told, and then it typically goes into showing the programming for the particular uh, uh, channel or network that you're watching. So with that, I'm gonna take you through some early kind of concept things that we do in this field called broadcast graphics that involves a lot of what you guys are being taught. You're being taught how to draw, a lot of drawing and a lot of animating. And what I'm gonna show you is some concept sketches, some early parts that allow me, the director, hopefully one day you guys will be directors too, me, the director, to explain to my crew, including animators, musicians, um, background artists, et cetera, mostly in the computer field. So all of the things that you just saw were all done, the vast majority of them were done in computer animation rather than hand-drawn animation. And in order to communicate that, we have to do drawings for our crew in order for them to build three-dimensional models in the computer and then to put texture on those models and then to light those models and to ultimately animate those models. And over the course of this month, I'm gonna take you through how we create a package for a network. And this is another area of animation that you guys may find intriguing, you may find something that you wanna get into as your field of occupation ultimately. So with that, Scott, if you're still there, we're gonna go to, um, we're gonna go to the still images now. And if you could hold there on that first frame, you can see guys that a lot of what you've been working on lately has been, hold on a second, I'm just gonna do something here quickly. Good. Um, you guys have been working almost exclusively, I believe, in your animation class, developing characters. And characters are typically, you know, animated characters who have all sorts of funny expressions and emotions and things such as that. Well, what we're going to do is I'm gonna show you an area that doesn't necessarily deal with characters as much as deals with a brand. A brand is the logo that identifies a particular network. So as an example, CBS has a beautiful logo. It's a perfect circle with an inner circle that creates an eye the looking of an eye. It's called the CBS eye logo, as an example. NBC has a logo that looks like a peacock, okay? And ABC, another major network, has a brand that looks like the letters A, B, and C in lowercase, okay? Uh, and then there's finally, the final major network is Fox. And Fox also utilizes Klieg lights, in other words, searchlights as their kind of general theme. So, Scott, if we could move on to the next image. You guys are gonna need to start drawing, not just characters, but you're gonna have to start drawing letter forms. We call this whole area typography. The ability to draw type or letters in perspective. So how do I do that? Because oftentimes the graphics combined with the logo of a network are letter forms. And they're very difficult to draw in perspective as you move from one side of it to the other side. So you have to learn how to draw in perspective with vanishing points. And one of my classes this month is gonna be dedicated to drawing in perspective. I'm not gonna do it today, but I'm gonna do it uh, 
probably in the second or third class. So please join me for that. It'll be fun to learn how to draw in perspective. Very important though in motion graphics to be able to draw realistically an object that is turned on its side rather than being straight face to the camera, but is rather turned. And what happens when it turns? Does it turn quickly? Does it turn slowly? Does it reverse in the middle of its motion? These are the kinds of things that you're going to learn, okay? So with that, uh, I'm gonna go through several concept sketches. Oftentimes when you're designing a graphic, a motion graphic for a particular network, you'll do what I call concept sketches, which are three-dimensional drawings, perspective drawings, that give you a sense of a story that you want to tell. But you're only creating the idea in one image, just one image. And you're using that to basically get your mind to be thinking, how do I take the concept of something like a city and put it into motion so that I can start to brand it as being brought to you by a particular channel? OK, so with that, um, uh, Scott, let's move into the next image there. So here's an example of a, a, a channel in Washington, D.C. called Channel 7. And as you can see, their thought was, and my thought was, why don't we create a gyroscope, a gyroscope that kind of gives the seven, it's a seven in a circle, seven in a circle, and how can we create a, a, a form where that seven lives in a gyroscope? And you can see that doing these perspective drawings, these concept sketches, you start to create ideas about how this thing can move and how it can uniquely move in order to brand that particular channel, that particular network, or even that particular show. So let's go to the next uh, image. Here's another one dealing with CBS. As you can see, this is a composite of three elements the cbs i logo in the background the channel that this plays on the number two and the program which is their news program so in one image i'm able to convey the story of this is cbs you're on channel two and you're watching the news and the idea is to create these conceptual drawings that give you a sense of storytelling and also style a sense of style like in this particular image i'm going to start playing with the ideas of transparency where you can see through various forms to other objects in the background depending on how much transparency or opacity those particular objects have let's go on to the next one scott here's an example for a, a channel two in the San Francisco Bay Area. And what I've done here is basically exploded that logo out into like an accordion or like a slinky shape. And ultimately, we're going to travel through that slinky. We're actually going to travel. The camera is going to go right through it. So I wanted to, in one sketch, explain to my crew what exactly is this concept that you're talking about, about being able to travel through the channel two logo as an example. So I did a perspective drawing here showing several different layers in the logo that we'll be able to travel through. Let's go on to the next one, Scott. Here's one for Primetime Live, an ABC uh, news program. This is gonna deal with a series of swirling colors that swirl around and out of that, the typography of Primetime Live is going to come out of that and come towards the camera. OK, let's go on to the next one. Here's an example of something for ABC News. So I've got the ABC, meaning the American Broadcasting Corporation. That's what ABC stands for. And you can see that it's going to float across the top of their news background. So as you can imagine, Imagine that you watch this ABC come in from behind camera, come into frame, 
and then the camera is going to turn and go down one of those very thin angles into the news programming. So again, using one image to kind of show these examples of conceptual thinking that you can communicate to your crew and to the client. In this case, the client was ABC News, the executives from ABC News. I had to communicate what the concept was. So we, we utilize these concept sketches. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, guys, here's an example of some logo treatments for this for the Disney Channel logo. The Disney Channel basically is composed of a graphic, highly stylized example of the uh, Mickey Mouse head. The Mickey Mouse head, as you know, has three circles. Those three circles uh, are then have some lines behind them. And what I've done here is explored how do how can the logo have different treatments but still hold on to the integrity of the actual logo form. So in this case, you can see on the upper one, I actually made the circles negative space, meaning that you could see through them. So that's called negative space, but still you can recognize it as the Mickey Mouse logo. The next one over is flat, a flat form sitting on a series of straws, almost they're kind of pipe-like forms. And that, allows you to again convey that logo in a completely different structure rather than it being negative space it's positive space it's actual flat plates sitting on a bed of horizontal straws same thing with the one to the right and then you'll notice the one in the lower left the one in the lower left i actually made the round forms actually three-dimensional spheres and those spheres also sit upon a grid or a, a layer of sticks below it, okay? And then finally over in the, in the lower right, you can see again, the introduction of negative space, but rather than it being solid form, it's a series of almost louvered glass paint planes like you would have in a louvered window, like the ones behind Liliana and Heather. You can see those louvers. So imagine that you cut through that to form the uh, negative shape of the Disney Channel logo. Okay, Scott, let's move on to the next frame. So, uh, sorry, Scott, could we could we go back to the previous frame? So, I want you guys to pay attention to the logo treatment in the lower left corner. The lower left corner is a series of spheres that make up the outline of the Mickey Mouse ears and Mickey Mouse head. And he, those spheres are resting on a kind of bed of sticks, horizontal sticks. Now, imagine if we were to take the camera and move the camera down and look at that logo from the side rather than the front. We're going to look at it from the side. And in order to do that, we have to visualize what does the camera look like when I bring this down to the side of that logo treatment. Let's go on to the next frame. And that's what it's gonna look like. Do you see that? So now you're looking at that logo form from the side. Now, when you look at it from the side, you can see that it's made up of several different layers in what we call the Z axis, the depth, the depth axis. You can see there's a plate on the bottom that is solid then the row of sticks above that and then finally the three bouncing balls on top of that so my concept is to say why don't we look at the logo from its side and let the balls bounce up and down with a lot of squash and stretch you guys remember squash and stretch i hope you do i'm sure you do remember squash and stretch so imagine you're creating an identity for the disney channel that most of their programming is animation. Therefore, you want their logo to give a perception of animation. And some of the classic techniques of animation are squash and stretch. So I'm gonna take this logo and I'm gonna put it on this angle. Then I'm gonna start thinking of how do I get from this angle to looking at it from straight on. So let's advance to the next frame. 
And you can see here, this is a composite sketch that shows what you're going to, what the logo is going to look like as the camera moves from looking at it on its side to all the way where the camera is going to be looking straight down on the logo. And when it looks straight down on the logo, it's going to form that Disney Channel form. But before that, it's going to be very mysterious. You're not going to know what's going on. There's going to be balls bouncing, music chiming, and all sorts of things. And then the camera is going to come all the way up and be looking straight down on those bouncing balls. And that's going to create the, the logo form. OK? So with that, Scott, oh, and by the way, guys, I open it up to any questions. If you guys have any questions at any time, just raise your hand in the session and I'll stop and I'll answer your question, okay? So let's move on now to the next set of drawings, Scott. And these deal with, these deal with dimension. How do you make objects in a space, in a three-dimensional space, dimensional? How do you give them some thickness, some thinness, some reflective quality? versus opaque quality, transparency. These are all qualities that should start to come from your drawings. In this case, we're just dealing with the dimensionality of the objects. So imagine Channel 2 News. If you were looking at that straight on, there wouldn't be any dimension. You wouldn't know how deep it is. You wouldn't know what the objects are related to the other objects. But with doing a three-dimensional perspective drawing, you can convey some of those characteristics of the actual logo form, okay? So let's move on, Scott. Here's another example of a squash press. So imagine in one drawing, you have a press, and the press comes down and squashes onto a flat piece of clay, and then that shape removes to reveal the object that has been pressed into that piece of let's say clay as an example. So it's a press example. So you press down, the object then forms into a relief, and then you pull the press off and you see the form. Let's go on to the next one. Here's an example of a city. So a lot of these channels have news programs that are based in a city, such as Phoenix, Denver, New York, Los Angeles, Honolulu. So it might be nice that you show the buildings that make up that city, and then that whole city graphic as you travel through it, as the camera travels through it, the, the city falls back and you suddenly realize that it's all on a plate that is brought to you by Channel 2 News. So on the other side of this plate, you've got Channel 2 News, showing you an example of how they cover the entire city in their news programming. All right, and next, here's another one based on that press idea. So you've got the negative form on the press and it forms the positive form. This time, the numbers and letters are being pressed into the clay rather than the, the objects being reliefed off. And again, these are all done with perspective drawings, simple pencil and paper and straight edge and you create the sense of dimension and depth and space by drawing in perspective rather than just flat 2D. You're drawing in three dimensions now. So you've got, you've got length, height, and you've got depth, in and out, depth, okay? All right, let's move on to the next example. Okay, we're gonna go into another area, guys, of, um, of branding. So you may have a logo, and that logo may be the number two in a circle. And how do you take that logo and break it into separate parts that you might be able to animate independently, but ultimately resolve at the end of your animation into the logo, creating this kind of memorable um, experience that makes you realize that you're watching Channel 2. It's all being brought to you by Channel 2 as an example. So one of the key things along with deal, dealing with dimension is you have to start dealing with light. 
How does light fall from one object onto another object? And in order to think of that, I highly recommend if you guys are working on a model or a logo like this, you can cut a little model out of cardboard or out of a hard cardstock, cut that out, and then put it against a flat piece of paper and move it to and from a light source like your, your desk lamp and see how the shadows play. As you get closer to the light, the shadows will become more diffused. They'll become softer at the edges. As you move the object further away from the light, the shadows will become much crisper, much sharper. And that is a very interesting way to create an imaginative en environment that is rooted in reality. You actually think this object could actually be real and could actually move because you're watching how the shadows interact with the actual object. Okay, Scott, let's go on to the next one. Here's another example of some perspective drawing where the camera, rather than looking from an angle at the object, is actually looking overhead. So imagine that the camera now is looking at the object from above and looking down on it. All of these things need to be explored as you deal with how to create motion around a graphic. And look at how the letter forms are all drawn out in perspective. That is difficult to do. And the only way to get good at it is you have to start doing a lot of perspective drawing. And you have to start thinking in your head what that object looks like, even though it doesn't exist. So as an example, when I drew this, I didn't have any object that I was looking at. I just was able to see it in my head. I was able to think, where is the camera relative to the object? Where are the vanishing points? In other words, where do all these lines go out to a point where they would all intersect? And then where is the camera? How does the camera work around that object? Let's go on to the next one, Scott. Here's an example again of how light and shadow play on to these objects. You can see the upper plane that is just the type, says um, channel two, day, special. You can see that that's actual positive form casting a shadow onto a, a block below it. And then finally, down in the block that's on the very bottom, the word special is negative. I can actually see through the letter forms. So that dealing with positive and negative space is very, very interesting, okay? Let's move on to the next one, Scott. Another example of what it might look like when the camera is brought down and look a little bit more at angle and the, and the light source is almost directly in front of the typography, the letter forms. And you can see some of my rough beginning sketching on the right side of that frame and the left side of the frame. And then I tighten it up in the middle so that that way I can kind of show some of the steps that I went through in order to think about how this dimensional object actually looks, okay? All right, so with that, we're gonna start telling the stories a little bit. Sorry, Scott, could you advance one? I wanna make sure I'm in the right place. Ah, okay, I have one more here. Here's another example of several frames drawn as black outline squares. And you can see how I'm playing with how light falls onto objects in a variety of different ways here. You can see, especially the, the frame in the lower uh, middle, the lower middle, you can see how all those shadows are falling onto those objects and how they interact with each other. Notice that the, the I and the two aren't even in camera. They're actually off frame, but they're so, the light is so strong that that, that CBS logo and the number two are actually casting a shadow onto these other objects. But you can't see it because it's behind the camera. So the, the CBS eye and the, num and the number two are actually just the shadow itself. You don't see the object. Okay, so now we're gonna get into some storytelling. Uh, and the best way to convey a story about a graphic or about a, a channel is to do a storyboard, a series of frames that show how the object 
begins, what happens in the middle, and then what happens at the end. The end is almost always, not always, but almost always the logo itself. So it's oftentimes easy to, to work in broadcast graphics and branding, network branding, to work in reverse. You know you have to end at the logo. So what is the story that I'm going to tell before I ultimately resolve to the logo? And we can demonstrate that in a storyboard. So let's go ahead and advance on, Scott. Ah, sorry, I'm, I'm kind of jumping ahead. I'm going to show you some more concept sketches here, guys. OK? This is actually showing some frames that are going to become a storyboard. I had to do a graphic opening for a, for a program called ESPN Baseball Tonight. OK? It's basically the nightly baseball game on ESPN. And they wanted what was called a main title. The main title was to be this graphic opening that started out the program and then ultimately went into the actual game itself. OK. And in order to do that, I had to do a series of concept sketches for them. And I came up with this idea that I could break, I could break baseball up into three main concepts, three main parts. The main parts were the pitch, the hit, and the play. The pitch, the hit, and the play. So with those three divisions in baseball, I was able to create a graphic story that took me through all of those. First, there's the pitch, then there's the hit, and then there's the play, OK? So I'm going to step through on my cue, Scott, I'm going to step through those three concepts and those three phases of baseball. So this one was demonstrating a graphic version of the pitch. You can see the ball racing through frame. You can see the word, the pitch. And you can actually see in the background a graphic image of a pitcher there winding up. Now we're going to move on to the next frame, Scott. And here's the hit. So you can see that the ball now is heading upwards into the sky. And you've got the batter. And you've even got some technical details on the bat itself. How big is the handle of the baseball bat? How big is it? How wide is it? How much dimension does it have? All of these are to be communicated into the story. Ultimately, the hit comes into the next image, Scott, the play. This is where the ball has been hit. It's been caught by the infield. And they're making a double play here. So the guy's going to. Tag second, jump in the air, and quickly throw the ball to first base. Okay? All of this creating a lot of dimension, a lot of drama. Drama is, is, uh, is, is accentuated by extremes. Extreme close, extreme far, extreme light, extreme dark. Okay? Those contrasts between those characteristics creates more drama in your communication. Okay? So let's go on to how this, how this story, so you had the pitch, the hit, and the play, and it was all going to resolve into the branding of this main title, which is called ESPN Baseball Tonight, okay? So with that, you're kind of beginning to do a storyboard there with your concept sketches. You're get, you've thought out a story, it'll be probably approximately 15 to 20 seconds long, and it's gonna go through three main phases, the pitch, the hit, and the play, okay? So with that, I'm gonna go on and show you some more storyboards, just so you guys can become familiar with storyboarding. So Scott, with that, let's go on. So here's an example for that primetime live uh, program. You can see that in the left, you're gonna start very close to some objects, there's gonna be a lot of this perspective with a lot of transparency. And then those, those planes are going to start falling back in space and they're going to resolve, in other words, collapse onto themselves to form the logo, Primetime Live, okay? All of that's gonna happen in probably about three to four seconds. So in three to four seconds, imagine you have these planes like this, okay? And they're basically gonna resolve like that. 
So you start out like this and you're going to go whoop, or vice versa. You're going to start in like this and you're going to resolve out to this. So you start in like this and then you come back and resolve like that. Okay. So let's go on to the next storyboard example. So here's one that you saw on the demo reel. Actually, you saw all of these in the demo reel. Um, but here's one for the, um, the World Cup that was hosted in Los Angeles several years ago. So I used the earth to show the overall global aspects of the game of soccer. And then I had the baseball come in from out, outside of camera and collapse over the earth to form a soccer ball and then to resolve itself into the logo for the, uh, for the World Cup. So you can see that that took six frames there. The first frame resolving all the way to the last frame and several four independent intermediate frames. So you've got a beginning frame one, you've got a middle frames two, three, and four, and then you've got an end, which is the logo at the end, okay? So let's advance on to the next frame. Here's some examples of branding CBS. CBS Network, and you can see here that these are different concept sketches, but these are storyboards now. So you can see how the motion starts in the left, in the beginning, and how, what it will look like in the middle, and then finally what it will resolve to in the end. So literally a storyboard has to consist of at least three frames, a beginning, middle, and end. The more complex your animation becomes, the more you need to include more frames. So if your animation involves a lot of quick cuts or different angles or light sources that are doing different things, your storyboard has to go from three frames, probably up to 10 frames long, so that you can explain to your animators and crews, crew what, what the motion is supposed to look like, okay? This is very, very important in storyboarding. And let's advance on to the next one. Here's some other examples of CBS. You can see that these forms are very simple, simple geometric forms, circles, squares, rectangles, ovals. And you can see how the animation starts with something very abstract. You would have no idea in the first frame that that's going to resolve to the CBS logo. You would have no idea. It isn't until the story is told and how these objects flip over and rotate that you ultimately see how they end up branding the CBS network, okay? And let's move on to the next frame. Here are some examples of branding for a particular uh, product. In this case, it's called Media Vision. It's a software product for animating and for interactive games. And you can see that each of the different concepts is a different storyboard, all of them resolving to the same end frame, which is that M for media vision, the M for media vision. So you can see that the first one is going to be live action of an eye opening up. So you're very close up on an eye. The second one is an architectural form where the balls are going to bounce down some stairs and come around. The third one is a robot. Uh, some sort of a robot that's firing its cannon. And then the last one is a juggler, an animated juggler. With those, Scott, I'm going to go ahead and uh, have you go ahead and just cycle through all four of the Media Vision motion logos. And guys, pay attention here and remember these storyboards so you can see how the storyboard ultimately becomes the animation. Go ahead, Scott.
You see that, guys? So now you can look at the storyboards. Take a close look at each of those storyboards, and you'll see how the story is told that ultimately ended up in those kinds of animations. They all resolve or end up with the M logo, but each of them tells a completely different story completely different story and it shows that the media vision product has a lot of different genres of titles you know game titles architectural titles mystery titles uh, cartoon titles things like that so all of those are examples of how you would brand a particular network or a particular product so with that, we're now at 12, sorry, my time, 12.15, 3.15, your time. Um, guys, do you have any questions or have you been working on anything that you want to share? It's okay if you don't. Don't think that you have to share anything. If you don't have any questions, that's fine too, but I'm going to look, let anybody ask any questions you want. I see Kat. Kat, do you, know. you have any questions? Um, well, I actually, I actually have something to share. Okay, great. Which is a completely unrelated realistic That's okay. style rabbit. Oh, sweet. That is good looking. Well done. That's really, really nice. Very, boy, you've got your proportions well done. Your proportions look really good. Thank you. Yeah, well done. That's, does that character have a name? No, it's just kind of a closer to realistic rabbit that I'm drawing. Good for you. Well done. And uh, thanks so much for sharing. That's really nice, Kat. Thank you. Uh, Liliana, Heather, you guys look like you've been busy working away. You got anything you want to share? Sorry, your audio is muted. Um, I've just been doing digital art over here. Great. Do you want to share anything? Not done. Oh, nice, nice. That's those. That character's got some big shoes on there. Looks great. Is it a he or a she? It's a he. Yeah, good for you. Awesome. Liliana, how about you? Oh, I'm Liliana. This is. Oh, Heather. sorry, Heather. Uh, Heather, you have anything? Do like eyes and stuff. Oh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, really good. Nice sketchbook. Really, really nice sketchbook. Hold on to that. Make sure you refer to it all the time. That's really nicely done. Nice, Heather. Really nicely done, Heather Rose. How about you, Tater? Anything you want to share? Uh, uh, yeah, just give me one quick sec to pull it up since I'm working on a separate computer. Uh, yeah, oh, start, start with this artwork, playing around with some perspective stuff. Yeah, good for you. That I, I, you know, it's really noticeable in that sketch that you've got your perspective well done. You see, you see how the ball and his hand are very close to the camera, and his trailing hand with the uh, sword is is way behind him. Done a really good job on the perspective there. Yeah. Excellent. Well Thank done. Thank you. Very very good. So, did you guys? Any anybody? Did you when when you when you read about this class? Did you have any idea that you were going to be learning about this kind of stuff? <laughs> it's a whole yeah it's a whole nother area of animation that's really really interesting so with that i'm going to have you guys we're going to end the class by playing that reel again i'm going to play my demo reel and i want you to pay attention to the reel and think about the storyboards and concept sketches that i shared with you that ultimately became these animations okay so with scott with that go ahead and play the demo reel again
Okay, guys, well, listen, that, that is the beginning of this month's theme based on broadcast graphics. That's a little introduction to what you're gonna be learning every Thursday. You guys are gonna start actually storyboarding yourself, so start thinking about maybe some logos. Maybe you wanna develop your own logo. Develop a logo for yourself and think about how can I animate that logo so that it, people remember it. They remember how creative I was in that short little story that I told that ended in my brand or ended in the brand of a network or the brand of a product like a, like a, a type of cereal or a, a toy or anything like that. Um, but you guys are going to be learning a lot of very interesting things different from what you've been working on. I noticed all your drawings were based around characters. That's a very, very interesting and very, very fun field to pursue. But there is a whole nother field in animation called graphics, graphic design and motion graphics. And that's the area that I'm going to concentrate on this month. So that'll give you a little variation on how animation is used out there in the real world. All right. So with that, do you guys have any more questions? All right, guys, I'll see you next Thursday. Please tell your friends and don't forget to make a donation if you like. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you next Thursday with another edition of Broadcast Graphics. All right, take care, you guys. Awesome. Thank you, Boogie. Bye, everyone. All right, take care.